Hello everyone and welcome to Five Dollar Gaming. It is on this, the most glorious of days, that we must pause and take a moment to give tribute unto the Lord. Wait, did I say the Lord? Oh, sorry, I meant Bruce Willis. Most people know about Bruce's long line of action and thriller movie credits in films like the Die Hard series, Twelve Monkeys, Armageddon, and Unbreakable, as well as his more than occasional attempts at comedy. But he also made a short-lived appearance in video games, two of them released about a month apart in 1998. One of those was a video game adaptation of The Fifth Element. And since I'm not masochistic enough to review that one... yet... Let's take a look at Apocalypse! A game I found at the same trade-in store as Evergrace, which advertises Bruce Willis almost as much as the name of the game. Released in 1998 on Halloween, Apocalypse is an action game that has both everything and nothing to do with Bruce Willis. It has nothing to do with any particular film he was in, and it has no movie attached to it, but it indulges in the kinds of scenarios present in them to the point that it seems like they were ripped directly from them. I should mention before we get started that Apocalypse has adverse effects on the people who play it. Being quick to anger, high aggression levels, guns randomly appearing, which is why there's an emergency crew standing by that's continuously monitoring my heart and hormone levels and will warn me if either of them get out of hand. And by standing by, I mean they're several hundred feet away behind bullet and blast-proof glass. Anyway, let's get started with the story, which is probably the worst part of this game. It's not that the story is horrible, although that can be argued, but how the game only seems to tell half the story unless the instruction booklet fill in the rest. Without it, we don't really know the background of Bruce Willis' character, we don't understand the main villain, and we don't know some of the characters that are supposed to relate to the plot. Even with it, we still have no idea where or when the game takes place, other than the future. But we do know that this guy, who we later find out is the Reverend, is not one to be trifled with. My four horsemen of the apocalypse, arise! The world must perish in our hands before we perish. Peace, death, tear the flesh from the heathen bones, plague, devour them with darkness. Man, this guy's intense. Can you imagine him just doing everyday mundane tasks like checking his email or making lunch? Hot dog bun! Send forth the foundation for my delicious conquest! Senior mustard! Deliver us from bland and finny fields! Hot dog feet sitting in the back of my fridge since last month! Deliver unto me! I haven't even started the game yet. So here's the story in a nutshell. The Reverend is manipulating the President to get rid of science in favor of religion. However, he uses previous scientific discoveries to revive four dead people and turn them into the four horsemen to engineer his own apocalypse. He tells people the apocalypse is coming, and his hundreds of millions of followers have no problem with it. If you're Christian and you're offended by the plot so far, don't be. While the game does essentially imply that Christianity is evil for this story in this time period, the representation of the faith is so inaccurate and exaggerated that it can hardly be called Christianity at all. For example, the four horsemen in this game are death, plague, war, and beast. Well, death and war are right, but plague? Were they trying to say pestilence? Or famine? Where in the hell did they get beast from? Oh, whatever. It's been four minutes and I haven't shown the game yet. Let's get to it. We play as Bruce Willis as Trey Kincaid, a nanoscientist imprisoned and sentenced to death. And if you think Bruce Willis playing a scientist is ridiculous, I have six words for you. Tara Reed, Tara Reed, Tara Reed. He gets thrown into his cell and meets an abusive inmate who... somehow gets killed. And then Kincaid electrocutes the sink, which somehow causes a gun to appear. Well, you see, it's because he's a... the sink is... he, uh... Um... SCIENCE! And so the game begins. Kincaid has to break out of prison and stop the minister's scientifically engineered apocalypse. 
and I found out very quickly that the control scheme is, well, different. The left analog stick is for movement, and the right analog stick fires in the direction it's pressed. It takes a little getting used to, but the game's difficulty curve gives the player time to adjust. Besides, the D-pad and the face buttons can also be used to move and shoot, and a combination of the two will also work. The game including a slight amount of sticky aiming at longer distances also helps. Really though, it depends on what you're trying to do in-game. Boss fights and generally running through levels are best with the analog movement, but platforming tends to work best with the D-pad, especially when the camera shifts to a side-scrolling style. Kincaid's default weapon is the machine gun, which, in true action hero fashion, never runs out of bullets. But the instruction book explains this away as a technological wonder of the future. Well, who came up with that? Was it Bruce Willis, or did some random mad scientist think this up? Hey, Dr. R here. If you think all power cells are the same, then consider this, you jigger. Imagine being in a prison cell, and when you electrocute a sink, a gun pops out of nowhere. You're gonna need a power cell for that. It can't just be any power cell. It has to be the Dr. R power cell that will supply you with infinite amount of energy to use at your disposal. The Dr. R power cell. Trust it everywhere. The world domination! <laughs> Seven other weapons can be picked up throughout the game. These include the particle beam, pulse laser, rip laser, grenade launcher, rockets, homing missiles, and the favorite weapon for my own sadistic desires, the flamethrower. Come to think of it, what's this game rated? I mean, I'm setting people on fire, shooting them into little bloody chunks, so it's gotta be rated. Okay, someone at the ESRB was falling asleep on the job. I almost forgot to mention the smart bombs, which are stronger on enemies that are close by and can deflect enemy fire. But like the special weapons, it's best to use the machine gun and save everything else for the bosses or the more complex sections and being able to switch weapons on the fly makes this really easy to do. Most of the enemies are ground units that fire lasers or lob explosives, but they show up in groups of anywhere from 3 to 15, varying in appearance and sometimes attack patterns by level. A lot of these guys can be taken out by running or jumping in a circle, but if they cluster or stagger their shots, this usually doesn't work. Plus there are the helicopters, turrets, zombies, and various other enemies to deal with. Still, except for when the game stops you or forces you to move, you can either take your time and kill or destroy everything in sight, or sprint and jump past enemies when you possibly can. You may not want to rush through it though, because there are one-ups to find and the game will give you them if you do manage to kill everything in a level. Another reason to take it slow? Searchlights. These things will drain all of Kincaid's life in a few seconds, and show up almost every other level, so don't try rushing past these. Overall, it can take anywhere from 10 minutes to a half hour to complete non-boss levels. There are four boss levels and 11 stages total. Each level is bridged by a cutscene, advancing what little story there is and displaying how Bruce Willis could single-handedly destroy entire nations. But these are short enough that they don't get in the way very much. And that's not saying Bruce Willis is a bad actor. Actually, his voice clips in this sound pretty good. Like he really put some effort into them, had fun with them and they just barely managed to not become grating and annoying by the end of the game. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you want some too? Drop one on, it's time to jam. Stop, 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 time out, time out, time out. Ms. Moore, what are you doing in my review? Because I want a cameo so more people would watch me? Eh, alright. Ah!